And Brian makes a note to add uh, that that Elizabeth Berkeley stripper movie to film sack. Oh yeah, get that on there. Let's get in there. <laughs> so we can watch Kyle McLaughlin uh, do it with her in a swimming pool. Yeah, we haven't had enough. Uh, what's the guy? The director? Ver- Verhoeven. We haven't done enough. Paul oh, Verhoeven. Yeah. Paul so. Verhoeven. Yeah, let's get them all in. All yeah. of them. All right. It's time, guys. It's let's time. Do it. Let's do it. Yep. Here it comes. Counting it down. In three, two, one. Michael, did you hear your father out of the water now? Now! Oh, boys. I think he's come back for his noon feeding. The Morning Stream. Win. There. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to TMS, uh, the post-Christmas pre-New Year's TMS for Monday, December 28th, 2020. I'm Scott Johnson. He's Brian Ibbett. Good morning, Brian. That's right. We're in the event horizon between two events. Yep. That's basically what we're, That's <laughs> what right. We are. Before you know it, yeah. Sam Neill will gouge his eyes out, and we don't know where the other guy went or however exactly. event horizon went. Hey, welcome to the show, everybody. We hope you had a nice Christmas, as nice as it could be. You know, I got to say, weirdly... Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Mine was all right. It, it, we were stressed. Yeah. It was feeling weird. We weren't sure it was going to be great. It kind of felt dumb. And we were just prepared to just kind of put our heads down and go, all right, well, 2020, have, have your way with us. This will be a dumb Christmas. <laughs> right. And, um, just uh, uh, clench your, clench your uh, cheeks and uh, bear mm-hmm. down and yeah. get ready for 2020 to <laughs> deliver its final. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> everybody everybody put, a, put a wallet in your mouth. Bite down hard. And uh, right. it'll pass. And uh, sure leather. enough, yeah. sure enough, it did. It was fine. In fact, it was more than fine. We actually had a really nice time. And part of that was due to, I mean, I hate to say it because I know uh, a lot of people had major disruptions, including you, over COVID-19. Mm-hmm. But um, last or this the, for this Christmas, it was actually kind of nice to have seen the results of everybody who could be together. All It all paid off because they all were incredibly careful. For the last, you know, six months, as yeah. as as careful as you possibly could be, and and it worked out. So we had the baby here, and Dylan and Taylor, and and uh, Nick, of course, and and Carter. But just the six, seven of us, seven. Well, mm-hmm. If you count the baby, seven, and um, we count him. He is countable. We can't. We, <laughs> we don't. If he can, know. if he has a hand to raise, he can be counted. Yeah, yeah. He has. He has a vote. He has a seat at the table, and um, mm-hmm. I, su- I succeeded in scaring the, the poo out of him uh, with my Santa suit. So that was fun. Oh, I saw the photo. Yeah, yeah. not uh, not recognizing uh, Grandpa in that suit. Nope. Not only that, I I mean he's two this month, or sorry, two yeah. in January, and I don't think he has connect. He he will not yet connect the dots between gift giving, of course, and this Santa Claus feller. So what'll happen is like next year it'll start to dawn on him. Ooh, gifts under the tree have his name on it. I should sit on his lap and ask for that. Like, I think that's when the turn happens. So, so presents yeah. are really just the bribery to not be afraid of Santa Claus. Yeah, in the end, yeah. That's okay. not. We weren't told that growing up, but I think that's. I think you're right. I think you're dead on. Yeah, but it was cute. Right, good. Um, the my favorite part of it was, and I didn't remember saying it until someone showed me the video after. But as, as I walked in, he was starting to look a little freaked out. And I went, all right, I'm coming in. Don't freak out, I says, as Santa Claus. Like, what kind of Santa Claus line is that? <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Nobody freak out. <laughs> Put your hands up. Ho, 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 ho. Keep, keep your hands where I can see them. Ho, 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 ho. Uh, it was great, though. I loved it. And uh, <laughs> it's the first, I do this every year for somebody. Somebody somewhere says, oh, Scott, pull out your Santa suit. I kind of hate that I have to do it every year. Because I'm not right. really, I don't look you like don't him. Hate. I can tell by the sound of your voice, you love it. I used you to. Love kids I love you kids. Love, I love kids. You're still, right. This is a way for kids to like, you know, a new way for you to, uh, uh, once a year, interact with kids in a in a way that's not. All right, show me what you're drawing. Oh, that's cool. All right, show me. That. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you're you're not wrong. In fact, you've you've got me you've got me pegged. But here's the thing: in yeah. recent years, because all of the cousins and stuff like that their kids have grown to be you know 14 15 plus years old uh-huh. it's no longer mm-hmm. there's no longer that throng of little children who want to be with santa and get a candy cane and 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 smile and ask for a present like they're they're past that there, but there's they, not a new generation of kids that are well they're starting there? to i guess van's part of that but 
Yeah. Uh, but that all that all happened kind of before. Mm. Well, they were all really tiny babies last year when I did it. Sure. And this year they're old enough, but nobody could be together. So my my time as Santa. Uh. In previous years, was starting to be a lot of old people going, <laughs> you should do it again this year. <laughs> like it was never about little kids anymore. And now it's about a little kid again, and it was great. I loved it, and I'll do it every year until there are no little kids around. But I don't, I'm sick of doing it where some 30-year-old will go, I'm going to sit on your lap. It'll be funny. Oh, God, <laughs> yeah. I hate that. Yeah. Hate it. Anyway. Yeah, I get it. Uh, so uh, we had a pretty good Christmas also. Did you know? uh, Christmas with, it was really just... Um, uh, Tina's folks and me and Tina, because Tristan and Kay have have the COVID. Tristan's feeling much much better now, and um, oh, good, good. Uh, Kay is dealing with some headaches and body aches, but really no, no breathing issues or anything like that that would that would portend going to the uh, uh, the hospital. But they're they're coming out of the other end of that. But obviously, we had a very safe and socially distant Christmas Eve with uh, Tina's folks, and then. Christmas Day is me and Tina. We, you know, wore pajamas all day long. We zoomed with my dad yeah. and uh, my my stepmom out in Vermont. Yeah. It was the it was the most chill and welcome Christmas we've we've I think ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Watched a little Wonder Woman. Oh yeah, I watched that as well. Can I just say yeah. this real fast, just to get it sure. out of my system? Yeah, I think Wonder Woman is okay. Yeah, that's that, a gr- that's the perfect uh review it's yeah. okay it's a little yeah. messy and all over the place over long mm-hmm. written by eight people uh mm-hmm. not really sure what it wants to be and when it wants to be what it wants to be mm-hmm. but it's fine go have a good yeah. time and watch it it's yeah, fine Tina's like well eh, wasn't as good as the first one but it was okay yeah like, yep it was yeah. okay and i now, you know the the standout for me is still gal gadot she was really good in it and yeah. i thought she was even more so, like really into her character in this one, and she just seemed great. I thought Kristen Wiig was great. Uh, used probably a little wrong, but still good at what she was doing. <laughs> yes. Um, and even freaking Pedro Pascal as this like over the top, mm-hmm. the opposite of the Mandalorian type character, right? Was fun to watch in some ways. I just think it was just too. He's like a TV plot. It was weird. I don't know. Very much a TV plot, and uh, and could we have gotten? I mean, with his with his his job, you know, with his uh, what he's known for in the DCU before he becomes or before it's he's the bad guy. Yeah, we couldn't have gotten a this is the way. We couldn't yeah, have gotten right? that. Not one from him. Yeah, not one yeah. little fan service. Or 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 I don't know. Maybe when he's with his kid and he's trying to be all sweet with his with his son, maybe there could have been mm-hmm. a moment that was like reminiscent of the, <laughs> the son tries to take a steel ball from the uh, <laughs> table. <laughs> That would have been great. All right, here you go. Don't lose this. I need it for my ship. I mean, my whatever it is, my coffee maker. But yeah, he, but we he, are going to talk about uh, with with Stephen later. We're going to talk about the other movie that came out on Christmas, mm-hmm. which I enjoyed a whole lot more. Well, we'll get yeah, we'll get to that. That'll be good. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's it was good. I'm glad you had a good time. I'm glad we yeah. you know did. I, I feel like we just were we had some anticipation for for rough seas that day and it was not as bad as i thought it was going to be so is it you know could we could we say that it's the equivalent of you've gotten beat up for nine months and now it's just like okay anything anything that doesn't involve getting punched in the face would be considered a good christmas yeah you call it a win (laughs) right that's a win right exactly yes we watched uh die hard christmas vacation oh nice uh oh i got a thing to say about die hard that I okay. just just noticed this watch through. Uh, All right, I think it's because we watched it in 4K, and things were really blown up on it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I never noticed this, and I think Bruce Willis straight up has this because then I went down a rabbit hole and found other movies with him with either no shirt or some kind of tank top on. <laughs> He's got okay. a scar on his left. I think it's his left shoulder. Yeah. Anyway. That's like this big long scar from like up here near his collarbone that goes all the way kind of down and around his his tricep that oh, I really? never noticed before, and he has it before anything goes down. It's like so it's it not like a way. you know it's, it comes from the terrorist attack. It's like a John McClane scar. But, yeah, it's a John McClane a, scar. Something from the cop but, days or whatever. Um, or <clears throat> Bruce Willis just straight up has the scar. Yeah, that's which is which. If you're saying you looked up other movies he was in. And I didn't know. Like, was it was it like a lifelong scar? Did he get it from? Mm-hmm. 
his strip tease wife, did you punch him real hard? Or like, what happened there? Like, I don't know. I don't want to start any rumors or anything, but that's Bruce's scar, says I, or Je- Jedi 71. All right. I there just never go. knew it was it's there. It's like I uh, never Harrison Ford's uh, chin scar. Right. Except Which in this didn't case, come from cracking a whip in a lion cage back when he was River Phoenix. No. And Allie <laughs> McBeal didn't do it, as far as I know. She didn't. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's not a, uh, uh, a, a golf course airplane landing scar. No, it came way earlier than that. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it happened way back in the moonlighting days. I can't tell, but we we saw it, and I just could not. Then I couldn't not see it. It was like, oh my gosh, Bruce Willis and your scar. That's the problem with high def. You start to you start to notice things that you didn't notice before. But anyway, we had a really fun viewing of that movie. I don't know why this time That's it cool. was it was kicking the way it was, but we just had a blast with it, and uh, it was great. So Die Hard continues to be. I'm on, I'm definitely in the camp, Brian, as well, as well the camp that it is a Christmas it's film. A Christmas movie. Yeah. Yep. And I enjoyed sure. it as such. So haven't watched it since uh, at all this year. We last time I saw it was the anniversary thing that Tina took me to as a um, mystery date in the theater. Oh, uh, right, theaters yeah. back when we awesome. saw it. <laughs> that is so awesome. Fortieth anniversary would it have been? I guess. Yeah, that's so Things cool right. though to do it that way. That's great. I was jealous yeah. of that. I remember feeling. Oh, also, I know what it was. Yeah. There's another thing later with the two Johnsons. Uh, the FBI oh, right. guys. The what FBI. Was it? We're gonna need. We're gonna need some new FBI guys. Yeah. I was in junior high then, dumbass or whatever he says. Yeah, that's right. This is just like the strafing run at. Uh, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Also, for some reason, I paid a lot more attention to Harvey Johnson, the news anchor, who thought that Helsinki was the <laughs> capital of Sweden. That guy's great, dude. <laughs> Eat it, Harvey! It that whole yeah. thing. Oh my gosh, I was dying. Yeah. I don't know. There's just the I can't remember what it was. There was something with the Johnsons, the Johnson mm. twins that 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 I I went. Oh, I got to remember to say that bringing this up to Brian, and I forgot. Oh, okay. so what are you gonna do? I forgot. Yeah. Uh, hey, quick note uh, before we yes. pull Dunaway in and play a game. Uh, you guys want to go check out the uh, the Appa, uh Mr. Kim slash uh, oh, what's his name in the Star Wars thing? I already forgot. Gosh dang it. Uh, oh shoot! Uh, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. I'll say the actor's name, Paul Sun Hung Lee. You know him as Mr. Kim on Kim's Convenience, and uh, oh. the the dude from uh, Mandalorian, who's uh, uh, new New Republic uh, cop <laughs> or whatever he is. He's like a traffic cop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, I interviewed him yesterday morning, and it went up, and uh, it was a great time. So if you want to get a, there it is, Teva, no Carson Teva. It's uh, Carson's the first name. Uh, that's his character name in Mandalorian. Anyway, gotcha. if you want to hear my interview with Paul, I did it yesterday morning and put it up right after. I put it on the TMS feed, FilmSack feed, Ultra feed, and somewhere else. Oh, Current Geek, I think. Uh, just so a bunch of people could get it. He is delightful. What a cool dude. Uh, giant thanks again for him even taking time to talk to me. Um, he's as nice and humble as you as you imagine and more so. And... Um, Oh man, he feels like a dude that might just like come to a nerdtacular if I ask him. <laughs> That'd be so cool. Or at least at least send in a video intro to All Stars that isn't him playing with action figures. Yeah, he had a really nice camera and microphone setup. I think he would be happy to be on camera, no problem. <laughs> um, he was just this really. It was just a really great conversation, and we were able to go a little deeper. I think, given my my family history with Koreans in my family and mm-hmm. all of that adoption in my life. Uh, and some of those parallels with the way Kim's convenience is portrayed and how familiar that all feels to me in that way. And we, we were able to go places, I think, that maybe you haven't heard interviews with him before. So anyway, it was rad. Uh, cool. It's there for the listening. Go check it out wherever you uh, you get your podcasts, I would say. No video on this one. We just did record. We just audioed it in the morning. Uh, but anyway, it was great, and I really enjoyed it. Again, that's over at frogpants.com on all those feeds. You can find it super easy. It's the latest post in the blog. Uh, if you want to just listen to it that way, it's on SoundCloud, whatever. We don't make this hard, guys. It's everywhere. No, Whenever we no, do stuff, exactly. just go it, get it. it. It'd be harder for you not to get it. Right. Then, uh... <laughs> right? Like, this is if this yeah. was a contagion, we we gave it to you. We gave right, it. Right, exactly. Yes, you, you caught it. I'm sorry that you, you caught it. And uh... That's right. We lick you up the side of the face. Now you've got it. Oh. oh All right. Oh. Anyway, thanks again, Paul. Let's get uh, Dunaway in here and uh, play a game. Very excited to see what Brian's doing today. Because <laughs> I have no idea. Me, Meaning you, not Dunaway. Right, yeah, 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 no, I know. I, I know. don't care what he's doing. Freaking yeah, 
he does the same. He comes in. He says, "Oh hi, blah blah blah." Yeah, who even cares anymore? Oh, Just man. kidding. Now this. Oh. Hey, it's Brian Dunaway joining us all the way from South Carolina. Uh, Post Christmas, Brian Dunaway. How are you feeling? How are you doing? Oh, hi, Scott and Brian. I'm doing fantastic. I feel good and it's starting to warm up just a little bit. So, oh, hey, oh, yay. Not here. Getting colder every day. Yeah. Good. You can have it. Well, getting colder every day. We happy, definitely have Happy it. Uh, holiday event horizon yes. to you. There you go. Yeah. How do you feel being in the in-between until New Year's? You got the Christmas and then you got the New Year's coming. How's that feel? You're right. It is a weird week and it's it's a full work week almost. Almost. Uh, for me, so yeah, it's always it's like that limbo of of I guess I better play with all my toys I got for Christmas. <laughs> yep. That's What's right. the? Well, tell me one cool thing you got for Christmas. Oh, uh, just one. Oh, yeah, just tell me one, because otherwise right. it would take forever. I'm I'm a stats nerd, so I got a Fitbit Versa three, oh. and I've been I've been you know obsessing on all the stats. It's like, oh, is that my oxygen level? Oh, look at there's my there's my pulse. Oh, why is it so high? Mm. Oh, I don't know. Now yeah. I'm worried. Yeah. No, no, there's a the uh, the verses are cool. I want to say, is it Sarah Lane DTNS has one. She loves it. I've heard good things I like about it. them. Yeah, I, I a, like oh, it. I still have their little uh, what do you call it? Charge four. I when my iPhone or my um, Apple Watch Apple shattered. Watch. On a rock. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, <laughs> like, uh, like it, you don't say when I shattered my Apple Watch on a rock. It's when it shattered. Yeah, it shattered. Damn it. I'm blaming it. But um, I don't but, know yeah. what happened. I've been using the sense. It's been really oh, good. so brings the bacon brings up a good point. I had something that was not nearly as expensive, but it brought me much joy as a uh, as a rabbit hat, mm. and it has like uh, these two pumps in it, and and that kind of hang down yeah mm-hmm. and so you can make the ears dance as oh, though great. they were that's independent great... of your own body yeah, that's, oh, that's great, great. Yeah. you hope you're wearing it now you wearing... i am you can't see it suck okay. it all right suck it <laughs> um but i the, do, I do wear it over I the weekend say. for my twitch my twitch feed so i want fun i want all my podcasting friends <clears throat> to do this i want you all to figure out what your resting heart rate is normally which in my case is it hovers between 74 and 78 that's my normal mine's mine's 54 yeah for my for my height wow you know I, yours you know yours like right off the that's a, like that's that, a really good Brian? number by the way and if you're if you're yeah. tall like me six three six four you're going to be somewhere in the 70 range usually yeah i've had anyway. to, i've i've actually wore a halter monitor before because they were like let's see what your average is over a 24 hour period because uh right now is like in the 40s mm. and i'm like oh okay wow you are chill low. yeah that's uh, according to my watch 73 is my average yeah so i'm i'm, I'm right around there normally now mm-hmm. when i do a show mm-hmm. i'm at 92 to 95 every show. Right. I'm at yes. 150. Yeah, that, that average was taken half an hour ago. And yeah. now let's see, what am I at right now? At uh, Yeah, where are you uh, sitting? Uh, it's measuring the little, oh, 79. Okay. Well, that's no. not bad. You're still pretty chill. Yeah. For some reason, I jump right to chill. 90 and stay there for the whole show. And then when the show ends, I'm back down in my 70s. It's weird. It, it's true. And you feel it afterwards. If you podcast or do any live show stuff, I mean, you feel exhausted afterwards. It's like, ugh. Yeah. Why am I so tired? I remember thinking, uh, I promise we're doing Battle Royale, everybody. Forget that. But, <laughs> but I remember thinking, like, how that seemed so high. Like, even in the 70s, it seemed high to me um, because other people were saying, oh, I'm like 52 or I'm 48 or whatever. Yeah. And uh, the doctor says, no, tall people just, you know, this is what you have. They've got to push it, the blood. I think this was their way of saying, you're going to die early. I think that's what he was saying. <laughs> I think that was his way of saying, "Hey, tall people, tall people crap out sooner because your heart's going faster all the time." Possible. I don't know. I'm never, how many really tall, really old people do you know? Not very many. <laughs> Not many. Yes. Mm. I will say that the uh, I'm still trying to find my favorite Apple Fitness Plus uh, psych, uh, spin class instructor. I think it might be Sherika. Sherika. Uh, Sherika. Sherika. <laughs> like they couldn't I'm... decide if they're going to name her. <laughs> Sherry or Erica, so they just said, "Oh, let's right. call her Sherry." Yeah, but uh, that's cool. There'll never be a song on that one. Mm-mm. She's uh, she seems to be the only one that doesn't uh, just blather about finding your best life and living your oh, yeah. good. See, that's what I would be looking for as well. 
Um, yeah. Maybe some of I start. Uh, yeah. I'm at the point now where I'm just tuning that out. It's like I hear, <laughs> turn up your resistance, turn down your resistance, and here comes a Spice Girls track. Those are the three <laughs> things that I hear yeah. when I'm doing the. Those are your cues. Okay. Well, Sherrick has been through some stuff. So has this listener who's been waiting very patiently. <laughs> Let's find out who it is. Hi, thanks for holding. Who's this? Hi, this is Natalia. Oh, hello, Natalia. <laughs> I like this voice. Natalia I like from this Russia. Voice. What, what, what's this, this voice you're donning? I like it. What's the change? What happened? Well, I, it, this is my voice. I It's no hassle. <laughs> oh, I see. Lean no hassle voice. It. I got it. Lean into Lean it. Lean into it. Uh, excellent. Well, we're good. glad to have you here. We're going to play a game. You know how they work usually, but Brian's got instructions, and he'll explain them now, Brian. That's right, uh, everybody. I'm going to be giving Scott and Brian a topic. It's not Kit Boga. And they're going to go back and forth with answers that fit that topic. If one of them gives a wrong answer, repeated answer, or they take too long to come up with an answer, the win will go to the other player. Talia, Natalia, your job is to predict, if not too much hassle, who is going to come out on top based on topic. <laughs> give, give her her prizes. They will be one step from Eden and indivisible from Steam. Oh, indivisible is good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're on. That's on top. You're on point today. That's a really good version of your normal yeah. uh, Russian accent. <laughs> well, uh, the thing that I've been watching features a Russian character <laughs> who really plays up the Russian thing, but you won't know what that is until Wednesday. Uh, is it Rocky and Bullwinkle? No. Oh, damn it! Oh, yeah. it's, not. it's not. Uh, but before they can start, uh, I need to give them a topic, and they can start thinking about it. Topic today comes to us from Michael Furlong. Listen, we're in that area right after Christmas, so a Christmas Babel Royale can still apply. Oh. Um, while listening to your mean one, Mr. Grinch, uh, a he mean says, one. I thought having Scott and Brian list the insults that Thurl Ravenscroft, sweet name, by the way, would, uh, yeah. her, uh, would be fun. I'm copying and pasting, blah, blah, blah. So there is a list of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 insults that uh, Thurl uh, says against Mr. Grinch. Uh -huh. And he wants to know how many of those you guys can name. Okay. I like this one. This is fun. Also, I like that we're still in the, you know, it's like it's we're leaving our Christmas ornaments up until after the first of the year. Exactly. I exactly. plugged in my Christmas tree yesterday. Yeah, it's still good. Wrong with that. It's still fresh. <laughs> totally fine. Totally Probably fine. totally fine. So, uh, Talia, uh, who do you think is going to come out on top on this one? And who do you want to go first? Oh, I have no idea. Um, okay. Done away to win, Scott to go first. Okay, look at you just doing nice. caution to the wind. Here's something I'll just say now that she, now that she's picked. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I my favorite animator of all time is Chuck Jones. Absolutely. Okay. And Chuck Jones animated the now classic Mr. Grinch uh, cartoon thing, mm -hmm. the Grinch thing, how the Grinch, <laughs> how stole, the Grinch Christmas. stole Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and I watched it more than almost any other thing in my childhood. Ooh. So I'm not saying I'm gonna win. I'm just saying. I maybe could have said all that before Talia. You right. Know, you, made the pick. I would have waited to say it after after you see it. But isn't that is it that gonna <laughs> write but does that mean you know I mean the song isn't isn't illustrative of the the cartoon there, right? I mean I know the song and I sing it every Christmas. Yeah, but it's in the whether, cartoon. Whether they want it or not. Well it was in the cartoon, so you know, you see the cartoon. Every enough, insult heard... was in the cartoon? Mm. I think the whole song was there, I think. Well, mm -hmm. see, this is where this is how we'll find out is we'll play right now. We'll figure it yes, out. Yes, exactly. All right, so <laughs> Scott, you get to go first. Okay. Uh let's start insults. with um <laughs> there's a really easy one. I'll leave it for Brian for now. <laughs> uh let's do you're a foul one. You're a foul you're one. You're a foul, foul one. one. Yeah. Uh absolutely. One of the first ones you hear, as a matter of fact, you're a foul one, Mr. You're Grinch. You're a foul one. And we are off to Grinch. the race. Grinch. When we go, you're a mean one. Oh, you jerk! Yeah. Uh, nope. Since that's the title, I'll give you a, a, your mulligan. Your your initial mulligan. That's the reason why I, I, I do it, it first. I give it to you in the intro, telling you that uh, you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. So yeah, that's right. All right. That's well, all right. I, had a, I had to check. I had to check. Yep. All right. Yep. Then I'm gonna go with. Hold on a second. Singing. Shh. shh, shh quiet. <laughs> My brain is singing. Everyone's He's singing. a bad banana. He's a bad banana. He's a bad banana. Is that all you're giving me? I'll take it. <laughs> you're a bad banana. Well, to, well, I didn't want to do the second part because I thought that might be a second answer. It's all part of it. Yeah. Save the second right. part. 
Is there another part? With a greasy black peel. There you go. Because okay. <laughs> you're not going to say as a second insult, uh, you have a greasy back black peel. Right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it is. I mean, if I just walked up and said, you got a greasy black peel, I mean, that's another insult. <laughs> well, no, I consider that all one insult. You're a bad banana with a greasy black peel. Fine. Um, <laughs> that's why the first ones count for me. I have to make sure uh, get them right. Very, the second line, I think, of the song is you... Oh, hold on. Let me make sure I don't screw that up. I mean, if I get a little letter off here or there, you're okay, as long as it's the main insult, right? Or, or, or A letter, we, yes. A letter? What are you going to spell? No, I mean, like, <laughs> like a, an uh or the, like a conjunction or something, if I screw sure, that Sure, I know. Up. I'm not, that, that won't be an issue. All right. Uh, then the one I want to say is you really are a heel. You, you really, really are, are a heel. Are indeed. A heel. Yep. Uh, absolutely. I think that is the very f- that is the second one you hear. That's right, because you begin with your foul one. Yep. You really are a heel. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Really are a heel, but not the mean one, because that was in the title. No, not right, that one. Exactly. Don't do that one. Fine. Yeah. Doesn't Especially count. now, don't do well, that one. Yeah. So if I get a question, okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, the insults is what's kind of getting me because I, I'm like you're going to get me on this one. Well, here's, here's um, the deal. If you so you know, give me. Give me what you think, and if you feel like you you're giving me too much, just give me part of it. And I'll tell you if I need. All right, you're cuddly as a cactus. How's that? You're cuddly as a cactus. But that's not really an insult. Sure, sure it is. You're as cuddly as a cactus, meaning you're not cuddly at all. Yeah, that's an insult. That's like saying you smell as sweet as a dog turd. It's like that. It's exactly yes. Nobody takes likes dog turds. Nobody takes that as a compliment, though. Nobody cuddle with cactus, Brian Dunaway. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I do. <laughs> All right. Well, well, I mean, people. Some people sleep on pins. They don't seem to mind. Yeah. Some people. Yeah. That's cartoons. <laughs> that's cartoons. <laughs> those nail beds. <laughs> that's, those nail beds are just cartoons. cartoons. Right. That's not. That's not even a thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cartoons. <laughs> it's cartoons. Um. Okay. My turn, right? It is your turn. I seem to remember. <laughs> so I've been doing this all day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, at some point, he says your <laughs> soul is full of gunk. Your soul is full. Your of soul gunk. is full of it's gunk. Full of- Indeed, he does say that, mm. and that is an insult for sure. For sure. Oh yeah. Unless your you're talking about their shoe, and you're like, oh, your soul is full of gunk. You no, may want to clean that. Insult up. your shoe too. Yeah, that's true. Or your your fish. It's full of gunk. Oh yeah, your clean soul that fish. fish. Oh yeah, fish. Or a D- Disney Pixar film. Well, your soul is uh, you, you, you got you got garlic in your soul. You got garlic in your soul. Yes, so much so, so like ripping on the poor guy's soul, the poor Grinch's right. soul, uh, so much. Mm-hmm. Yep, you got um, garlic in your soul. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's in your soul. What'd you yeah, say? I said that. That's what I said. Yeah, that's what you said. <laughs> you didn't say you got garlic of your soul or garlic at your garlic. soul. Garlic. Oh, That's geez. right. Yeah, okay. It didn't sound right for some reason when you said it back. I was like, that doesn't sound right. So hold on. You did cactus? She, I can't tell you that. Oh, what, yeah. do you, what do you mean? No, 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 I know you did. Should, should be keeping track in your head. Cuddly as a cactus. Charming as a... <laughs> hold on. Charming as a what? Charming as a rhyme. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Charming as an eel, I believe. Oh, dang it. You're as charming that as an eel. That was Mr. My next one. Grinch. Mr. Grinch. That's correct. All right. Well, hey, remind me, real quick, did the live action Jim Carrey thing use the same song or am I making it up? Don't ever saw it. <laughs> it's, ba- it's bad. I hate it. I heard that it was bad from the get go. It's like just never. Some, what people, if, what some they, people adore that they, thing. Not me, man. I can't do it. It's not good. Anyway. What go if ahead. the um? What if the insult is a. Like, a, a, a quote from somebody else. Does that count as well? Uh, and quote? I quote. Yes. It's, if it's in oh, the song. Oh, yes. Okay, yes. Yes. Well, the, 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 three, right, the three words that best describe you are as follows. Stink, stink, stunk. Very good, yes. <laughs> uh, it's great. And my mom even made uh, Christmas ornaments this year that just stink. said 2020 <laughs> stink, stink, stunk. <laughs> 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 Homemade Christmas ornaments. I think she put them on Etsy. <laughs> oh frick! Did we do this one yet? 
And, and, and remind me, our, our standard mulligan rule, our new mulligan rule is in play where if your first one's wrong, you get to go Correct. again. Yeah, but there's I'm, no okay. you, mulligan time has long gone. Yeah, that's the reason why I always say something stupid up front. Ooh, and then and Brian snow. corrects me and goes, no, you can't do that. Snow is uh, falling down all around the Coverville oh. Cottage. Yes. Oh, really? That's, that's, that's uh, what we're having as well. Uh, there's a system, I was told. In the whole Inner Mountain West, we're having a system. <laughs> a system? Yes, yeah. I hear that too. It's a system. Your shape, like an well, avocado. Well, about half an inch, half an inch to one inch. Yeah, 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 blowing in from the east. All right, I'm going to say... You're, um, you're uh, you're pear-shaped uh, Mr. Grinch. Hey, you're trying to throw me off the trail here. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Grinch. You're a monster. Do we do that one yet? Oh, that's a good one. I totally forgot about that. We did not. Not that I we have not done it. Oh. Nope. Your monster, Minster, monster, Minster Grinch is. Uh, Minster Grinch. That's where I'm going to lose Minster on this Grinch. one. This feels like one of those where the loss will come from me forgetting what Brian said. I think so. Yes. Yeah. You're a monster, Mr. Grinch. I got to be careful. Off the table. And now I forget what he said, but I do know that he uh, he has termites in his smile. So. <laughs> termites in his smile? Is yeah. That, you that have right? termites in your smile. I don't remember termites. Mr. All. Grinch? Yeah. Um, you get termites in a smile. That's in the song. Second, hold on. It's not in this list, but I seem to remember Mr. it. Grinch. Hold on a second. I'm doing a. Oh, Mr. Mr. Grinch. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the second line of the stanza? How's it work? I mean, it's because there's a second part, too. I don't want to say it because this is the part that always makes me laugh. Yeah. You know what? It's funny. Yeah. I'm Ooh. glad I pulled up these lyrics because there's, uh, there's a bunch that Mr. aren't in, in the list that. Uh, Michael Furlong sent me. So yes, unless he doesn't. Uh, maybe termites. Michael Furlong doesn't doesn't uh, take that as an insult to say that you got you got freaking termites. <laughs> in your You're not. Yeah, termites is now taken, and I'm gonna manually add some of these <laughs> as you guys say if you say them. Hmm. Um, okay. I'm running out here. Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh. Hold on. <laughs> See if it fits. See if it fits. Uh, it's a little termite in your soul. Right. Oh, <laughs> now that's really going to mess me up. <laughs> you got a pinky in your coffee. Oh, do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, well, Mr. I got Manch. it. I got it. Your, uh, your, your heart's a dead tomato. Something, oh. something, something. But it's your dead tomato. Your heart's a dead tomato. Your heart's a dead tomato. That's interesting. <laughs> I don't, I don't know that one. one. That's interesting. Brian's chair, uh, he has to check, I guess. I thought that was Yeah, it. this is because this is not in my list. I'm checking the official lyrics here. Um, I am not finding any dead tomato. I'm trying to think of any tomato <laughs> it's in gotta there. It's got to be in there. Yeah. Rotten tomato? I'm hearing no, it in my head. Uh, movie. Your heart's a dead tomato. Your heart's a dead tomato. <laughs> Isn't that? Uh, am I making I that? I don't know, but I like that lyric. Yeah. I'm putting it in next year. Uh, I've got no dead tomato, Scott, and uh, I've checked two sources. And hold on, let me look. That can I now? Okay. okay, you've made your call. What is that? Can I look it up? Well, hold on a second. Jeannie says it's in there. Let me look at a really? different. Really? Okay, I hold on. There's again. yet a third version of this. How many versions of this are there? I only know the one. Oh yeah. Okay. You know what? I'm giving it to you then. You haven't Googled it. Really? Right? No, I haven't looked up anything. Um, I'm yeah, I'm curious about if I this was... This that must not head. be on the version I have. Your heart's a dead um, tomato. Your heart's All right, so now this is the version right I'll be using. Uh, your heart's a dead tomato splotched with moldy purple spots. I'm giving you tomato. I have never heard that lyric in my life. Which version is that? <laughs> Give me the know, what I'm was really the last curious. bit of that, Brian? What was the last part of that? Uh, your, uh, let's see, splotched with moldy purple spots. Huh. Your heart's oh, a man. dead tomato uh, splotched with moldy, with moldy purple, spots. purple spots. Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, that's now that thing. sounds a little more familiar, but now I can't tell because now I just feel like you're just making it's up. It's all crap. running together, dude. It's all <laughs> messed up. This is a, it turns out to be a really good topic because I can't. <laughs> I know. Well, it turns out to be a good topic that uh, that I kind of wish our emailer would have provided a full, a more full list <laughs> of. Yeah. But, uh, it's all right. I'm giving you crap, Michael Furlong, but I really appreciate you sending this. Yeah, and we, right, we loved to... you in Terminator too. We wish your career. Well, was I might as well now. go back to my termites because the next verse is a uh, uh, given the choice between the two of you. I'd take the seasick crocodile. Yes, you're, you're a seasick crocodile. What? Right? That's not in there, is it? 
Yes, it, that one absolutely is. Yes, given the choice between the two of you, I take the seasick crocodile. Yeah, because he stops the song. He goes, given the choice between the two of you. Okay. Take the crocodile. Shit. And and because it it references the the previous line, I'm giving you that line too because you have all the tender sweetness of a seasick crocodile. Given right, the choice right. Between the two of you. So I'm giving you yeah, that one yeah. because of the seasick. Yeah. The words I was looking for were seasick crocodile. Okay, right. that's the true insult there. Yeah. Um, well, the real insult is that I might be out here. Um, we did monster. I did monster. We did foul one, didn't we? Foul one. Watch your tomato with a seasick crocodile. <laughs> I don't remember the splotchy tomato, though. That's weird. Okay, I, I'm out, except there's one line I know, that, but I don't know if it counts as, a, as an insult, so I'm just going to try it because I can't think of anything just else. Try it. Try it. He says something about won't touch you with a 35 and a half foot pole or something like that. <gasps> that, that That's an insult to say, I wouldn't touch you with a big, long pole. Nope, that's, it's absolutely an insult. I'm going to give it to you even though it's 39 no, and a half foot pole. it's 39 pole. about to say. 39 and what? 39 <laughs> and a half? <laughs> I it was 35 foot. foot. It's not? <laughs> oh, it's weird. I'm giving, I'm giving it to him because it's the, you know, it's the... I'll take it. It's, it's the, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll only, take it. only count the legal answers. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Well, I'm going to do, I'm going to go out with a song like this. I'm going to go, um, um, you're a, 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 a triple decker sauerkraut and toadstool sandwich with Arsenic sauce. Arsenic sauce. Yes. Uh, teaching kids about the uh, the nature of arsenic. Indeed. Triple decker sauerkraut and toadstool sandwich. Um. Mm, now I'm hungry. It, Brian. Or if they have that at the uh, at the Schlotzky's Deli. Mm. Oh, Schlotzky's. God, I haven't had Schlotzky's in a while. Me either. We used to go there all the time i bet they have splotchy rotten tomatoes what was oh, it again oh no they got a good they got a that sandwich Dead tomato splotch with moldy what's that spots? thing called this the the main sandwich they made there uh yeah i think oh, it was the, the Slotsky. it yeah. might have been Slotsky. that bread it's, was like this weird... we used an entire can of uh sliced black olives on this sandwich enjoy it <laughs> yeah that's true there was a lot of that but they had that great bread that was all airy and stuff yes like airy and then uh crispy on the outside Good. Okay. Um, there still is one around in, in northwestern Colorado that I can go check out. I might be at the end of the times here. And Mr. Varga, I don't think we made that deal with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm... I'm out. Uh, okay. That will put guess. you in the oh. end of the pool where the turds, turds float. float. Thank God, because I can't think of anything else. I've gone through the song. I'm like, I'm pretty sure we've already said some stuff. Uh, you're the you're the f- fart that never leaves us. How's that? You're the Close gaseous, enough. nauseous. How's that? Is that? <laughs> 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 Gosh dang it! You're a, you're the skunk. I came I get, into I get this lost feeling in the really middle. confident. It's around the middle of the song. I I lose a lot of it. Yeah. yeah so uh, ones you guys didn't say. Cuddly is a cactus. Your heart's an empty. I did say cuddly is a cactus. Yeah, he did a cactus. Bad. Did, did you? That. Why didn't I mark that one? I don't know. That was an early one age. where he did the cactus. Yeah. Oh, and then weird. I... Yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, that was the first one because you were you weren't sure it was an insult to say. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. So you didn't write it down. That's funny. <laughs> did you say your brain is full of spiders? No. Okay, I that's the one I currently. Yeah, yeah. I put a B voice. next to that one instead of a B next to Cuddly as a Cactus. Uh, um, heart's an empty hole. Your heart is full of unwashed socks. Uh, You're a nasty, wasty right. skunk. You're a crooked uh, jerky jockey, and you drive a crooked horse. What? <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> a crooked in jerky there. jockey. Uh, you <laughs> nauseate me, Mr. Grinch, with a noxious super oh, nose. Of course. I, I thought about saying you nauseate me, but I wasn't sure if that was an insult. I can't remember the second Wait, part of that. Wait, super nauseous. What's the na- nause? What's that? The nause. Like, emphasizing the, the nause and nose. nauseate me. Nauseating. Oh, yeah. super nause. Super nause. Okay. Uh, your soul is an appalling dump heap overflowing with the most disgraceful assortment of rubbish imaginable mangled up and tangled up nuts. I can't remember that part. And I think that's... All the oh the king of sinful sots s o t s sots what's oh, sot? what is that, I remember that one. Sot. sot what is that a like sot. uh like a sot is a an undesirable a deplorable that is hilarious. you have to be 
let me tell you something about insults in the earlier part of the 1900s. <laughs> right, exactly. There was some there was some insults that I just did not understand. Yeah. And I was we were watching uh, Yes Virginia There is a Santa Claus with uh, Charles Bronson. Never seen it before. What? And they were you and they were throwing some insults that Charles I was like, Bronson. "Oh my god." My grandma was a racist. Also, I didn't even know it. How did? When did Charles Bronson make a Christmas movie? That is crazy. Right, That's what I said. I was like, "Is that Charles Bronson?" I was like, "That can't be Charles Bronson." Is Charles Bronson? Was he Santa Claus in that? No, he was the reporter. He was the disenfranchised reporter. Uh, all this is based on a. It's based on the the the, the true story, but it's, it takes a lot of liberties, of course. Sounds like horse uh, poop. Not but yeah, there was it. there was some words. I don't even know if I can say the word. I don't even know how much of an insult it is. All I know is that they toss this word around a lot at the house, and I don't think it. I don't think they know what it means. <laughs> I see. <laughs> but it's just it's without papers is the ins- insult. You're without, without papers. <laughs> you're, but it's you're it's, it's abbreviated, right? It's abbreviated for that. And they always call each other that, and I was like, okay. Yeah. Does wait? Uh, does it mean when uh, someone says you're a paperless office, you're a bunch of people without proper documentation? Is that's that what right. It means? Yes. Yeah. You're paperless. You suck. You get a printer. You get a printer. Be paperful. <laughs> uh, Sot, by the way, clearing up is is a drunk. I forgot that uh, Sot yes, is, you're right. is a drunk. Oh. Sometimes, sometimes when you're too close to something, you can't see the forest <laughs> for the trees. Right. <laughs> so when you a Sot, that's hilarious. Why right. in the Sot? Here's the bottom line, though. The, Let the, me pour a little more from my flask into my coffee, shall we? Yeah, become a solder at the end of the day. Check this out. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Tally, you picked it right. I guess I was too confident. And uh, you won. That means these Steam games are now yours, and uh, they'll be yours for the taking. But you got to email briancoverville at gmail.com as per usual. Did you have a nice Christmas? How'd it go for you? Oh, it was very nice. I got an Oculus Quest 2. Oh, well done. Oh, nice. Yeah. That is have the... you picked up Super Hot VR yet? Super. I downloaded the demo, and I'm gonna, it's probably going to be the first thing I do. Super. Oh, so yeah. yeah. Super hot. Super hot is awesome. Uh, well, well done. Congratulations, and Happy New Year. All right. Well, Brian, we've got another winner. It's in the past. We don't have to think about it anymore. I'll try to be better next time. Uh, <laughs> oh, my wow. gosh. Yeah. Wow. Uh, next time for us will be Wednesday, so come back Wednesday. Sure. We'll give it another swing and play another game. In the meantime, Brian Dunaway and I are be doing the Boop Show tomorrow, uh, Tuesday at three thirty Mountain Time. We did our best of our favorites of the year last week. But we got some uh, some good stuff before the year ends, so come on back tomorrow. Yeah, I found out. another I found another uh, instant classic for me, so I'm very excited. Monster Sanctuary. If you haven't played it, it's yeah, I cracked that open last night. Pass. It's uh, great. It turns out that thing's yeah. kind of my jam, so you were totally right to recommend it, and uh, we'll talk more Love about it. that one as well. So uh, check it out. Be there for that. And then Film Sack this weekend is a thing I don't remember. What are we doing? Are we doing anything? <laughs> oh, yeah. Doing? I don't remember either. What are we doing? It's uh, been we like... Did, uh, this, well, this week is uh, a special, very special episode of The X-Files featuring uh, two people as guest stars who are associated with the Spider-Man but didn't uh, it, didn't you already post that one for yeah, Christmas? Yeah, that's up on. I put that up on Christmas. Oh, that's that was yeah. that's right. That went up this last weekend. Oh, we do have a new one this yeah, week. Don't we do. Crossroads it... featuring Britney Spears. Oh gosh, no! Yeah, you liar. He's lying. It's uh, liar. I think it's Air Force One. If I'm not in mistake. Air oh, that's Force right. One. That's right. Yes. Get off my plane. Whichever one is sure we've done before, but we have not. We'll be doing Air right. Force One. So yes, exactly. Watch for that coming up this weekend. Brian Dunaway, anything else you'd like to say before I unceremoniously boot you from the call? Sure. Uh, live, follow me on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash Brian Dunaway. Yeah. I game there a lot. Yeah. Maybe too much. Maybe too mm. much, you might say. Maybe. Maybe too much. Bye. All right, he's gone. But not forgotten. Uh, mm. We're going to take a break. Yeah. When we do take this break. Oh, I'll tell you what. This break is brought to you by ANTP. Brian, why don't you tell me the details yes. about what ANTP is? Oh, my is. gosh. It is, it is your next to last day to... Uh, <laughs> to sign up to apply to be a member why because uh i'm extending it by one day because we're having jury on tomorrow and jury is adding a prize to the prize package for antp for this season that is really really cool um his production company uh, justin robert young enterprises inc i don't know what it's called um will produce an episode of your show oh that's going to be added to the the prize package that uh already includes some really rad stuff so if you have not applied yet Go to America's Next Top Podcaster.com 
and apply. A dog and pony audio. Is that is that it? That's right. Dog that's and right. pony audio. Correct. I believe that's correct. There you go. Uh, very D-A-P-A. nice. Uh, that's that's great uh, to hear. So yes, please go sign up. Brian, where do they do it again? What's the website? America's Next Top Podcaster dot com. You'll see the application right there. On the homepage. All right. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Stephen Schleicher will be here. Before that, Bill Duran talking about the world of makers during this in-between time. Uh, before that, though, a song from Brian Ibbett's Plate of Songs. Uh, let's let's uh, clean our plate for the year, shall we? This is a good one. Jimmy Stanley, um, whose influences include like All American Rejects. I hear, I definitely hear some like Vampire Weekend. Um, who's the guy? A little bit of Pavement. Mm. Um uh Ben Queller is who I who I hear in this oh. one. If you're familiar at all with Ben Queller, then then maybe you'll hear it in this one too. Uh he's got a brand new a brand new album that just came out called Reckless Behavior. Here's the first single from it. It's called Zombie. Here's Jimmy Stanley. All right, we'll be right back. Please stand by. So today I saw a very large group of anti-vaxxers protesting. And as I watched them, I realized they all had something in common. They all live in a world made possible by vaccines. Why isn't there a vaccine for cancer, one of them said to me? Because cancer is not a virus. And do you know why you don't know that? Because you're not a doctor. The fact that you are suspicious of a vaccine that can stop a pandemic. Because you've never lived through one. Because of vaccines. Get on with it, Sylvanas! <laughs> The morning stream. Uh. Oh, I love when Fletcher messes up. <laughs> I do too. Always a good time. It's so rare, but you just gotta enjoy it when it happens. It's oh yeah. Like, it's like that that f bomb laden Alex Trebek video. It's that's like, right. Wow, that's just something you just don't hear, and it's funny when you do. Yeah, let it wash over you. I say. All right. Uh, we're back, and uh, we're going to make some calls. It's important stuff. <laughs> All right. Uh, what are we, are we selling uh, subscriptions, right? Yep. We're going to see if we can get some, some magazine subscriptions out there. I worked for a company for a while that did that. I hated it. hated every minute of it. It was awful. It's a terrible company. But I made enough money to put gas in my, my piece of crap for it. Anyway, hey, <laughs> look at this, everyone. I'm going to play this. Your bat cave's open there, Bill. Joining us from his studios or home, I'm not sure which, in the Pacific Northwest, specifically PunishedProps.com, it's Bill Duran joining us as he does every Monday morning. Hi, Bill. Good morning. I'm at home. Oh. I usually am. I, I usually don't get up and out the door early enough to get to the shop to do the show. <laughs> mm, makes sense. But makes also, sense. also, we're taking this week off. We're not oh, doing uh, any work. That's nice. Yeah, it's nice. You got to give I, yourself that once in a while, you know? Just let yeah. yourself have it. Sure. Uh, which really means I'm probably still going to do work. I'm just not going to film it. Mm. Probably. <laughs> that's, okay. what, that's what taking a break means for me. <laughs> well, by the end of the day, I expect a manuscript for Foam Smith 4 on my desk. Yeah, okay? I know, right? Get that to me. <laughs> Uh, well, it's uh, great to have you on, as always. Always over there making stuff and inspiring our community to maybe dabble a little bit in the makings of things. What did you uh, want to talk about today? I made a bag. I, I sewed a bag. Mm. I le- leveled up my tailoring. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. I'm like, I'm like this close to nether weave. <laughs> how many how many uh, boars did you have to kill to get the uh, the hide to do this? Right, right. Yeah. Oh, that's leather working, Brian. Come on. Oh, keep it together, Brian. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, so wait a minute. So you so I have to assume this bag is a, has a specific use case, right? You didn't just make a bag, right? It's like a bag to use for special bag needs, right? A, it is a very special bag. Uh, I um, uh, it was a gift. It was a Christmas gift. So I made this bag for my dad as a present. Oh. Uh, now, I do want to point out, sewing isn't really my thing. Uh, it was a little bit of a challenge, but I, mu- I muscled through and I got it done. Uh, I even made two of them. Whoa. Now, like I said, this was a, a Christmas gift, uh, gift for my dad. And I made it from sailcloth. Uh, and the pattern is, is a pattern from Adam Savage. So he has several bags that he sells over at uh, his website, which is Mm -hmm. adamsavage.com. And I made his EDC2 bag, the Everyday Everyday Carry 2. He has several Everyday everyday Carry bags. You can just buy the bag from his website if you want. Uh, But the pattern is like 15 bucks. It's a a paper pattern. 
you get it mailed to you, you cut it out, use it to cut out all your cloth, and you can make a bag as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, you... Now here... No, go ahead. Here's the fun wrinkle. So I knew I was going to make this bag for my dad. He has stuff that needs carrying around. So like a year and a half ago, I called him because dad, dad races sailboats. And he has many old retired sails. They wear out and you can't really use them. Not as good for sa- racing anymore. So I said, hey, dad, I got a project. I could use some sailcloth. Can you send me one of your sails? He's like, sure. Yeah, no problem. No questions asked. Little does he know that I use those sails to make him a present, Whoa. which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, and it sounds like you so, surprised him. He had no idea. No idea. No idea. Uh, so, uh, so anyway, I got this sail, <laughs> and I, I cut it all out and I made a couple bags from it. Uh, sail cloth, by the way, if you're curious, very different type of material to work with than most other cloths I've used. I don't even know, like sail like a boat sail, like a thick. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, all right. I don't know I, why. I think it's like, I fe- it feels plasticky. I feel like it's made of like nylon or something. Interesting. Um, and it's a really tight weave, right? You don't want wind blowing through it. Uh, so it's it can be kind of tough to stitch through, as I learned. Especially as you start adding more layers. So, you know, you hem an edge, so suddenly one layer becomes two. And then you stick two of those together. Suddenly you're trying to stitch through four layers of cloth. And then you add another piece. And the limit for my sewing machine was about six layers of sailcloth before I started started struggling a lot. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that sounds like um, a, that sounds real thick to me. Like super. Yeah, thick. and it's th- what I found was that since the the weave on it is so tight, the the needle had a hard time pulling mm. the uh, thread back through it uh, once it punched it down and into it. Um, uh, so I, I did a couple things. I used a thinner thread, which seemed to help. Uh, but there were a couple of spots with like just so many layers of cloth that I swapped out some of the sail cloth or something a little easier to sew through. Um, it's a part on the inside that you're not going to see. So the whole thing still looks like sail cloth from the outside. And that totally worked. Uh, after a lot of struggling and cursing <laughs> and like a day and a half of of uh like i walked away from the project for a little while i even considered dropping 750 dollars on a used industrial sewing machine on craigslist oh, man. i just figured if i get a machine a better machine i could totally finish this project but i didn't have to do that definitely got them done well very uh, nice are you gonna are you now like a uh it's it, you have the bug it's in your veins you're gonna just keep sewing and before you know it hats and and purses and uh, freaking i don't know socks whatever you make when you sew is that the new uh, world? N- no, oh. no, not at all. Okay. No, I just <laughs> sewing. I don't know what it is. I'm I'm okay at it. I've done. I have actually done a lot of sewing. I did. I sewed a lot of costumes growing up. My mom taught me how to sew growing up, um, and I am okay at it. It's just not. Uh, it's not a process I really enjoy all that much. Mm. If I'm honest, mm. I think if I had a better machine that didn't struggle so much, uh, I would I would be okay. Right. But every like every like 10 minutes i'd have to stop clear out a tangle uh curse at the machine uh take out the bobbin and like rearrange everything like every 10 minutes and having to do that every 10 minutes really like kind of saps the motivation from me so i think if i kind of knew better what i was doing maybe if i maintained my machine a little better maybe if i had a better machine I'd enjoy it more, but uh, it's not it's not as as fun for me as gluing foam together. Has has either of you or have either of you is the correct English way of saying it? Uh, have either of you seen <laughs> the uh, the BBC One show, The Great British Sewing Bee? By any chance? No, no. So no, apparently, I was it's great. They make cakes? <laughs> <laughs> They sew cakes on yeah, there. I don't know. Cakes. I don't know about any British shows that don't involve cakes. Yeah, yeah. You sew the cake, and uh, you're good. No, it's it's uh it's basically that format though. Yeah. You know, the the kind of the, the reason we all love the the British Bake Off, you know, which is you know this kind of different take on reality competition, but applied to sewing. And I haven't seen an episode yet, but I heard somebody say somewhere said to me somewhere I can't remember this week said that is an amazing show and you should track it down and find it. Yeah. And I'm guessing the BBC player or something like that has it, but uh, yeah, we yeah. we we love the Bake Off, the Great British Bake Off. Yeah. Um, we also watched the Great British 
or the Great Pottery Throwdown. Oh, hey. Very similar vibe, very British. Mm -hmm. So this sewing bee show you told me about sounds yeah. awfully, awfully wonderful. So wait, yeah. the clay one is on some streaming service I do have, right? It's uh, um, The clay one's on HBO Max. That's what it is, Max, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Honest, I've yeah. been wanting to see that. We marked it and said, that, you know, queued it, but we just haven't seen it yet. And you, you liked it. You think that's good? I sure did. Three three good seasons. Everyone cries at the end. It's awesome. I all love right. it. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. I want more of that stuff. Like yeah. I'm, I'm fine with baking all day, but you know, bring me bring me yep. alternatives. They have that other one so. that's like a cooking one that's like straight. It's not baking, but it's very similar, and it's just food, food, like oh, regular yeah. food. Still British people. Still the nice competition. All of that. That's also a very good show, but one of the hosts makes me want to pull my teeth out and mush oh. them up with a hammer and then try to jam them back down my throat. That's how much I hate that host. <laughs> don't know his name. Anyway. I don't know. Well, this anyway, is great. Anyway, my bags turn out great. Yeah. I want to see these bags. You got pictures? Yeah. So, yeah, I tweeted about them uh, over twitter.com slash chinbeard. You'll see some pictures. You'll see the sale before I, I, I tweeted a bunch of pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm super proud of how it turned out. Um like I said, I made two of them. The the sort of practice one is the one I kept. Uh, and the slightly better one is the one I sent to my dad. Yeah. I uh, I actually, for, for his, I acid etched his name into a piece of copper and added that as a nameplate to the bag. It looks really steampunk. Oh, cool. look at these. Right? These look fancy. You could have told me that these are some kind of Kardashian BS with like, hey, look, at we got the fanciest new bags from... Pierre Von Chuckle Cheese, and they're four thousand dollars a piece. That's, That's really... my favorite designer. <laughs> Chuckle Cheese. Yeah. yeah, they look great. Wow. They they are cool. I am really happy with how they look. They're super durable. That sailcloth doesn't mess around. Uh, it's worth the effort for sure. Um, and I, I've been using mine. So I finished these a couple of weeks ago, so I could you know mail it out in time for Christmas and all that. And I've actually been using mine as like a smaller bag that I carry stuff to and from work. Like yeah. I have a I have a camera I chuck in there I have like a notebook, uh my my gloves because a little cold out and a scarf get chucked in there it's great. That's uh, great. Dad loved it. Uh, we did a little uh, FaceTime chit chat with the family on Christmas and he really really liked it. But my guess is that my mom is going to steal it. I have to put my money on it. <laughs> she's probably thrilled though because she's like, hey, my handiwork. I taught him how to do this. He knows how to my sew because of me. My mom takes credit for all of this. Yeah, all everything your, I make. All your maker she, stuff. Yeah, lightsaber, yeah, whatever. She, it's your mom. She's a. Uh, I mean, she's retired now, but she was a high school art teacher for like twenty five years. So oh, that's oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. She should take credit then. Absolutely. Yeah. And my dad uh, is also retired, but he taught English, uh, middle school English, for like 36 years. So he Jeez. takes credit for all the books. Look how this, uh, studious you are as a. I know, right? Uh, this, the twin son of, of education parents. Well done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And one of your and your brother's a teacher. So look at this. My brother circle. and his wife are both high school science teachers. Yep. yep. And I taught high school for a year. Whoa! Really? Yeah, yeah. Did they? Did you guys that. ever swap Bet places? You didn't know that about me. Do you guys ever did swap? Do you ever swap places just to mess with your students or anything? Uh, no. At the time, uh, I lived in Seattle and my brother lived in New York, so oh, that would have been an expensive prank. It's the prank. ultimate. It's the ultimate fool. You're on different yeah. coasts. Oh no! <laughs> what? What subject did you say you taught? Um, I taught a class on 3D modeling and a class on Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver. <laughs> wow! Okay. This was two, 2006, 2007. Everybody, this was. Imagine a whole That's what course, everyone was using. an entire course dedicated to one song. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Special guest today in our classroom will be Gary Wright. <laughs> you may know him from nothing else. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Well, that's great. Uh, very cool stuff. Go check it out on his Twitter page. I'm, I'm actually blown away. All this description was like, oh, that sounds neat. And then I saw it and went, oh, these are legit. Like, these are nice bags. Yeah, yeah. I'm so go make a bag it. is what we're saying. Uh, but totally. Don't, yeah, don't use your bag. Anyway, that doesn't make sense. Hey, uh, why don't you also <laughs> then uh, regale us with a bonus link of some sort today? I got a good one for you. Well, I, I enjoyed it anyway. Um, it is a watch restoration video. It's about an hour of a guy taking a watch apart, cleaning it, and putting it back together. Mm -hmm. uh, may not be for everyone, but I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, if you look up, uh, it's an Amber Abercrombie and Fitch watch. The channel is Wristwatch Restoration. <laughs> Ooh, look at that! It's a watch. newer channel. He's got only oh, like ten videos. Oh wow! Uh, look what he did! But, He's got like a whole like 
Oh, this person's got some time on his hands. I don't know how you do ah, this. Nice, nice job there, Yeah, you Scott. like that? You like that? But look at these. He's got even got little uh, watch finger cover units. Look at this. Yeah. Oh, he has all the tools. They have all these tiny specialty tools. I'm personally just jealous because his studio for filming this takes up about three square feet. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, mine is 2,300 square feet, and it costs me a lot of money a month. Yeah, I was going to say. The, <laughs> the I'm, looking, I'm waiting to see these watch finger cover units. You mean those little rubber thimble things that yeah. you can... That, yeah, those, that's, are, those are I mean, cool. You, office assistants can get those so that when they're dealing with large stacks of paper, they can grab... Oh, is that true? I've never actually seen yeah. these before. Yeah. I don't, I yeah, don't know why you, I'm blown away by the dumbest stuff, but I think those are those are rad. <laughs> what do you bet though? These are specific for watchmakers, and they cost ten times as much. Yeah, probably. Probably. Actually, these are longer than the. Now that I'm looking at these, these are way longer than the, the little um, modeled, uh, thimble covers. Oh, you got to sure. protect the second knuckle. Yeah, maybe you they're just special. condoms. They might be condoms. I don't know what they are. <laughs> um, look at this. This so, guy might have giant hands. <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole bit where he's like acid washing stuff, and oh man, mm -hmm. that's so cool. All right, I do like this kind of thing. I could I watch a guy do this. I was wondering what they do for fingerless gloves. What they do with the fingertips? Apparently, they just give them to this guy. Yeah, what do they do? <laughs> what do they do with the extra small condoms that don't fit most men? They put them on their fingers. <laughs> Um, all right. Key, uh, it's got a little reservoir and everything on the tip. Oh, <laughs> all right. Bill Duran, as always, a pleasure. Uh, we wish upon you nothing but the best in 2021, and we look forward to uh, having you right back here on the first Monday of 2021. Wonderful. Uh, See you then. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Oh, follow him on Twitter, Chinbeard, everybody. Chinbeard. Okay. That's cool. That is cool. They look a lot thinner than the, than the thimble, those horrible colored thimble finger tip uh covers you can get now those like i have seen and, right and they go like yeah. here they're literally like they don't even they don't even i think they don't even go to the first knuckle i think they they just come shy of the first knuckle at I'm, least on me they do i'm trying to think of anything i do every day that i could use those for and i can't think of anything i got some for some reason 3d printing oh i think it was when i was doing the 3d printing a lot with the uh resin because mm, mm. i don't want to wear full-on gloves but having those to just kind of deal with it that was a lot easier than putting on big old full gloves yeah that makes sense and kept my fingers dry from that toxic resin crap. yeah and if, if will smith would have used one on that ball he'd still have his uh that's right he'd still have his fingerprints that's what i'm saying <laughs> all right we're gonna get, <laughs> uh, remember that that was a thing burned them off uh why isn't major spoiler showing up oh because i spelled it wrong there we go Hey, bringing them in, making it happen. You spelled it the French way, right? Like, yeah. Major Major spoilers. Where's his thing? I can't find it. There it is. Welcome to the program, Mr. Steven Schleicher from Majorspoilers.com, Hayes, Kansas. You know, all that stuff. Probably in this, experiencing at least the edge of the same weather system we're apparently about to get. Uh, Steven, welcome. How are you? Oh, good, Scott. Good morning, uh, Scott. Good morning, Brian. Yes, we good are getting uh, the... Uh, the just the front edge of the snow mm, yeah tasty. oh it's supposed to come through uh, big for you guys like they're talking about east i-70 from denver towards kansas city being a sheet of ice at wow. some point tonight yeah it's supposed to rain tomorrow so i'm sure with the high of 40 and the low of 25 that yes there we will go. be yeah i-70 will be closed more than likely well mm -hmm. that should that'll either encourage or slow down the kansas city mafia and their dirty dealings so hopefully everything <laughs> works out still got a little fargo on the for those of you keep a track that is today's fargo reference <laughs> i can't help it take a um, drink Sot. So, <laughs> yeah, you, you dirty sot. Hey, Steven, uh, it's good to have you here, and uh, we're going to chat about stuff. I, I do need to get your take on Wonder Woman in terms of like kind of an overall review here. You're a, you're a DC guy. You love the DC and uh, have enjoyed, I think, uh, some DC properties in film, including the previous Wonder Woman film. What would you think of the new one? Hey, did you know that Pedro Pascal yeah. was actually in the Wonder Woman TV pilot? No. Somebody mentioned that in chat earlier. Yeah, the one with uh, Pilecki. Yeah, with Adrian Pilecki. Adrian yeah. Pilecki. No, yeah. I didn't know. I, yeah. I did also was find out Was he a today. villain or was he the Steve? Uh, I, no, he played a police officer in that, okay. in that pilot. All right. Did you know he was also in an, an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and we just all forgot? That he was in there. You don't say. Yeah, I, I hear he's also occasionally in this uh, TV show called The Mandalorian. <laughs> what? That's yeah. crazy. He even takes Amazing. his mask off and everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, you should. I thought of you specifically when I was talking to Paul yesterday. You should listen to that interview because it just. Yeah, felt no, like I'm very excited about it. I've been following him since uh, like 
since that show dropped on Netflix uh, the very first time mm. and was just like, oh, man, this is such an awesome show. Yeah, you should so, watch yeah, I'm it. very interested in listening to his interview. You should, because he's, I don't know, Phil's major spoilery uh, for sure. Uh, and you yeah, he's got a great spoilery. YouTube channel. I don't know what, did you guys talk about, like, all of his cosplay stuff that we he did. does and we all did. that? In fact, I wish it, I kind of do wish it was a video interview because behind him he had just countless, because I, he's a, I didn't know this before this, but he's an actual bona fide member of the 501 in Canada. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and really? He's got, oh, that's so cool. He's got Mando helmets, trooper helmets, all this stuff he's he's cosplayed and made, all behind him, just lined in the walls. Dude is like way into it. And uh, dude, yeah, he he's got a YouTube that. channel where he does a bunch of unboxing videos and talks about you know the things that he's making. Yep, it's a bitter Asian dude Inc. And I'm sorry, bitter yeah. Asian. Ah, crap, bitter Asian guy. Ah! I think his like bitter a... Asian dude is his uh, um, Twitter account, right? Twitter account. Yeah, so I think it's Bitter Asian Dude INC is the actual uh, YouTube channel for what he's doing. And people should watch it because it's rad. That guy is a total nerd. Complete and utter nerd. And his helmet that he made for... uh, for the Al- or for the uh, the Rebel Alliance uh, p- pilot helmet that he made on his own years ago, I think mm-hmm. it looks better than the one they gave him in the Mandalorian. So, anyway, worth checking. Yeah, they they uh, <laughs> actually a lot of people asked him when he, when he first appeared, did he get to use one of his own costumes? He's like, no, they made it made a costume just for me. So mm-hmm. it's pretty cool. Um, anyway, so you, you should go, check yeah. it out. Uh, so this uh, this whole deal here, though, this Wonder Woman deal. Did you like it? Did oh, you, hey, there was another movie that came out. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. This weekend. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm loving I'm loving the uh what's going on here. Yes. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I'm, 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 oh yeah, just just so you know, anytime my wife says that something's just okay, yeah. uh she doesn't like it. <laughs> and she loved the first Wonder Woman movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, but this was just okay in her mind. This was just okay. That's how we felt. We didn't we yeah. didn't we yeah. didn't hate it. Okay. Okay seems to be the agreed upon review. Yeah. Two my, letter, my youngest, official two letter review of Wonder Woman 1984. Yeah. My youngest was constantly going, Oh, how much longer is this movie? And I kept adding time, like, Oh, it's more three more hours, four more hours. Yeah. It's and then long. afterwards, I was like, So, what did you think? He goes, I was trying to sleep, but it was so noisy because we were watching it in the home theater with the new screen and everything. So, yeah. we did that. We had a similar experience. We really cranked it up. We, we had four, we have got, you know, a 4K thing now and all this. And yeah, had the sound all up and we were like ready for it. And man, it was. It was uneven. It was definitely a movie. Let's just say that. Yeah, it was a me. It is a movie for sure. Um, all right, all those delays, all that time, totally worth it. All right, back to the other movie. <laughs> I haven't seen Soul yet. Did everyone else see you it? You haven't. Oh. No, oh, because my here's why. Let me tell you why. I live in a household of people who were like, I don't know if I feel like crying today. I don't know if I want to be sad. I don't want to me me me. I'm like, well, you don't even know. It's it's Pixar. It could be all uplifting all the time and not a sad moment. Even though I know they're probably right. But the point is. We, let's watch it. And they were like, I don't know if I'm in the mood to feel bad. Don't worry. It'll always be there. We'll watch it. And I'm like, all right. I guess I'm either doing it this by always myself. always be there. Or I got to wait for all of them to get in the right mood. It'll, it'll yeah, always be there, like Parasite. Yeah, I didn't think Soul was <laughs> super sad. <laughs> you didn't think it was sad? You, did you find it inspiring? I mean, it's got uh, sad moments, but I don't, I don't remember crying in this one like I did in um, What's the Brain movie. Uh, oh, oh, Inside, inside Out. out yeah. Inside Out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dice Tomato just said, what is soul? And if that's not the most Dice Tomato thing that Dice Tomato has ever said. Oh, my gosh. Dude. So listen, Scott. Put that, on his, put that on his, his gravestone. Here lies Dice what Tomato. Is what is soul? Seriously. <laughs> this is not a spoiler, okay? But be prepared because there's a lot of heavy concepts and a lot of deep thoughts mm. that take place in soul. So, um, you know, questions about... Uh, what happens after you die, things that happen before you die, uh, what is a soul, just, there is so, it just goes so deep mm-hmm. into, you know, this meaning of life and and what it is, that it's, it will really stop and make you think, and, I, and I've seen several people go, I think I need to watch this two or three times just to catch all of the little bits that they're trying to drop into you that is philosophy that you really need to think about as you're watching this movie. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the the heck out of it, and uh, mm-hmm. going into it with knowing nothing about it. That's yeah, uh, that's so so great. So did you, yeah, did you Brian? Did are, you, is the music aspect some... of it strong? Like, did you come away as as a music lover going, yeah, I really I, the respect they gave. I, I know jazz isn't necessarily your first choice or whatever, but did, no, you but felt... you know what? I did have appreciation for it just because of how much time I've spent with Andrew Allen and and learning 
improv jazz, what, you know, what they do on stage to kind of like uh, silently send it to another person for a solo. Mm. Um, but um, the music doesn't play, the music plays a part of this, but not nearly as big a part as I was expecting. I really was expecting it to be um, more prominent just because of, um, just because of like the, the, the ads you see and the, the, mm -hmm. Yeah, I did too. Now that you say that, it's in, that's interesting because I thought it was a I thought it played a pivotal part, but maybe not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now there's it's some there's some controversy. It's important, it's important to the the film, but it's it's not as you know. I was expecting like eighty percent of the movie to be jazz. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay, well, yeah, it's good to know. It's gonna also nice to know that Pixar can pound out. Uh, 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 I mean, I know they probably work started on this before the pandemic, but sure, you know ostensibly most of probably most of the production happened post and it's nice to know pixar can retain that magic mm -hmm. in an in a weird time like this where you know they didn't have the same collaboration level and that kind of stuff right so there's a couple of things that i want to point out first of all there's some controversy because there's uh, some people that feel like some of the representation in the film isn't done correctly and pete doctor who is the uh, director and the writer of the piece said hey we wanted to make sure that we were trying to express a black experience uh, as best we could. And um, so we can't represent everyone's experience. So what they did is they have a trust. Mm. Uh, they have a cultural and music consultants that they they talked about uh, or interviewed and, and were part of the process every step of the way. They also have a Pixar cultural trust, which is an internal group of uh, people of color who uh, actively take part in making sure that the film is trying to be as representational as possible. Mm. The other thing that's really cool is watch to the very end of the credits. Let me see if I can pull <laughs> it up to get the exact wording of this. Um, because they say, hey, we want to thank everybody. You know, this uh, this uh, movie was made in Emeryville, uh, created and produced at oh, the Walt yes. Disney Studios Motion Pictures. And then they say, uh, as well as... Um, people's homes people's six homes. feet away from each other yeah 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 and, and homes at least six feet away from each other throughout the bay area which i think is this really nice nod to say hey we worked during the pandemic to make this happen yeah and yeah. you know without really just calling up and said hey we went through you know a bunch of problems trying to make this film in a covid pandemic but we did it mm -hmm. uh, i just thought this was a really kind of nice touch and i know that 30 years from now maybe even 20 years from now uh, somebody's going to be watching this with their kid going, oh man, I remember this. And they're going to see that thing at the end of the credits and the kid's going to turn to their dad and say, what the hell does that mean? Yeah, what mm -hmm. happened then? Right. Tell right. us the story, father. And you'll go, yeah. Let me tell you a tale. Tell and us the story of the, the great pandemic of yes. 2020. Tell us about COVID-19. I mean, you may be saying that to your to your grandson. You may be saying that to Van in, in 20 years. Oh, you probably don't remember this, but. I guarantee we will. It's like Nick mm -hmm. with 9-11. He was born. He was like a year or eight months old when 9-11 happened or something and no context for it, right? So uh -huh. when he got to be five or six or seven, he would start wondering what the heck the, the, the hubbub was and we'd have to try to explain mm -hmm. it. Similar kind of thing, I think, probably the pandemic will be. And I, you know, I assume that's true of World War II veterans whose grandkids or kids come of age and like, what's what's the deal with the war, Grandpa? And you gotta, mm -hmm. you gotta tell them. So anyway, that's pretty cool. Uh, so let me ask you this. So this is Pete Doctor. He is known for some of the more prominent and and heady uh, productions at Pixar, in particular uh, with his direction, things like Inside Out, Up, uh, Monster Inc. I don't know if you can count that one, but it's still pretty rad. Anyway, he's he's kind of their guy they go to when they want to get deeper. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. like get yeah. the, the esoteric, the, like uh, yeah. philosophical. Yes, and yeah. and do you think that was a good? call here steven yeah, i think so i i think so i think he's the one that you know he comes up with these ideas and brings them forward and so yes i think he is trying to look at animation as an as a just another medium to tell a really good story and mm -hmm. to especially with you know disney buying pixar years ago you know trying to keep them separated saying you know our animation doesn't have to be uh singing animals mm -hmm. even though there are animals in in soul Sure. Uh, but you know, you don't have to have this just every five minutes. You got to have a musical number to keep the kitties entertained. You can actually have something that has deep thoughts and deeper meaning beyond what people consider animation as just this kitty fair. Yeah. Yeah. I love that they do that. Um, and yeah. I, and I loved last year's, uh, onward. I just love that movie. 
Mm-hmm. It was great. Yeah, that was fact, really good, too. It's like a Pixar sandwich for the pandemic. It's like March, <laughs> I did that, and now we got this. And in both cases, they were unique in that they went direct to Disney Plus very quickly. In, in the case of the first one, it was in theaters, but not very long. And then mm-hmm. they brought it home very quickly. And then this one, they did day and date, which is pretty cool. Do we know anything about the numbers of the weekend? Like, Because there were theaters no. that ran these and stuff. Do we know any of that? No, I haven't seen anything. I've, the only numbers I've seen is about Wonder Woman um, from the Hollywood Reporter, but I haven't seen anything about Soul. And the, and for Wonder Woman, they were only reporting on the Chinese uh, box office. Box office, yeah. Yeah, so they're really not reporting on anything that's going on in the United States, although I'm sure if Box Office Mojo has anything yeah. uh, this morning that they will probably uh, have something. And I don't see, I see Wonder Woman 1984, 16 million. I don't see anything with Soul uh, listed on here, so... Mm. Interesting. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes says, oh, they're not even listing it. That's hilarious. Yeah. I thought they started doing that again once theaters sort of kind of opened up, but I guess they're not. They're mostly saying, no, I mean, here's what's hot. How many streaming. theaters are really open? <laughs> yeah. I mean, right? there's not really that many. Yeah, you're not wrong. So, anyway, mm-hmm. uh, well, I got to watch Soul. That's happening this week. Watch my, Soul. I'm going to tell my kids and, and or Kim and Carter, it's like, look, if you guys can't handle it, I'm, do- I'm just watching it then. Make a little birdhouse in it. And That's what I'm it. saying. Particle Man, right? Yeah, Wrong song. yeah they might be giants, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Stephen, uh, also, there was uh, news of some action figures in the form of Invincible, one of my favorite comic runs. Yeah. And uh, Yeah, so the comic run is brilliant. We're getting the animated series coming this year on Hulu. I believe it's going to be in the first or s- second quarter of this year. And uh, Skybound and um, Diamond Select Toys have teamed for a series, or at least the first two, uh, Omni Man and um, and uh, Dick, um, to do their to do their figures, to do Invincible and Omni Man. And these aren't just the little three and three quarter Star Wars size figures. These are going to be chonky boys. These are seven inches tall, mm. so they're big. Multiple points of articulation, swapping out hands and. Uh, accessories and faces in many cases and they are um, going on pre-order now Um, if you want the one with the multiple hands and all the different face poses you're probably going to have to go to a specialty store to get those like your local comic book shop or if you've got a I don't know what other kind of uh, I doubt Hot hot Topic might might grab a couple of these but the ones without uh, all the extra bits uh, they're going to be in Walgreens uh, coming up in, in this year so if you don't care if you just want the figures uh, that you want to pose and you don't care about the other stuff that stuff will be showing up in Walgreens probably around summertime so feels Brian, like there's not a lot of overlap in the Walgreens shopper and indie comic book uh... <laughs> no, I don't know who had this idea so yeah. I don't know when the last time you went to Walgreens was, Brian, but they do have oh, a available really, at CVS. <laughs> they have a large toy aisle in Walgreens. They, they do. And for yeah. I want to say like four or five years, they have been doing Walgreens exclusives. And so Here's you can go there thing. and get like uh the uh the mini mates. Uh you can get those. You can get action figures. They had a a line of avatar action figures that were exclusive to Walgreens. So occasionally you can go down that aisle and find some really cool games that are uh, Walgreens exclusives, especially if you're a Munchkin fan. Uh, and then they have the action figures, which are exclusive. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, it doesn't jump to mind when I'm thinking of that stuff, but mm-hmm. I remember when I, was a, when I was a kid, we had this grocery chain called Skaggs. Did you guys ever have oh, Skaggs? Yeah, I remember Skaggs, yeah. Uh, they were like a, like a Rite Aid kind of thing. Kinda. Like some groceries, but, but also... Yeah, more like a Walmart yeah. uh, marketplace mm-hmm. or whatever those are called, mm-hmm. like a kind of smaller yeah. th- affair. But anyway, when I was young, we'd go there to get like bottled Coke and play Asteroids because that's where they had the Asteroids <laughs> machine. And um, I was always surprised in a place like this. You walk in and go, OK, this is everything my mom needs. But then I'd go to a corner of it and be like, here's a big rack of comics or whatever. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I always like it when something like this happens. Like Walgreens is more than just aspirin and, you know, vibrators or whatever they do there. <laughs> they also have, they also have your uh, your invincible toys, which is pretty cool. Now, here's my question: If you, I don't know if you know this or, or not, but the Hulu animated series, mm-hmm. are, how how yeah. far how into the far comics are they going to go? go? Because that comic is pretty yeah. violent and has some pretty hard themes, and it's what no, makes going, it great. If they, you have watched the trailer, you can see a hint of the violence that they're putting in there. So the Ryan Otley art from the comic books is over the top violent. I mean, if someone gets punched in the face, you know, there's an eyeball with. Uh, 
with matter attached to it flying at you in the in the panel. Uh, I think they're getting pretty violent in this in this series. And again, okay. you've got to remember this is uh, what's his name, uh, Pineapple Express. Um, producing oh, it. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Seth Rogen. Seth, Seth Rogen. Rogen yeah. yeah. He's probably la- right now laughing all the way to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it says Prime Video. I thought it was Hulu. No, is it Prime? I think I'm pretty. Uh, well, it depends on which one you're looking. I'm pretty sure it's Amazon. Um, um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It it's on Prime Video. All right, so not Hulu. Uh, but anyway, I'm looking well, at, at the, one point the yeah. show was going to be at Hulu, and then they then they passed on it. Um, the style is very like almost like traditional DC uh, DC animation, mm-hmm. but but violent. I'm in. Sign me up. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, I'm all yeah, in. Yeah. All right. Well, that's awesome. Uh, finally, there's if you're a fan of Overwatch, you, you're sort of waiting for Overwatch two. And uh, there's a new comic that's like there to tide you over called Overwatch Tracer London Calling. Actually, this is the second issue. Uh, Mm -hmm. I haven't read any of this stuff. I'm usually a little uh, slow to care too much about comic books based on video game properties. But should I be checking this one out? Um, I mean, I think if you're a fan, if I'm not mistaken, doesn't that uh, short that features uh, Tracer... Doesn't that take place in London? It so I'm does. pretty sure that this is an expansion of that original animated short. Yeah, that's what I think we're looking at here because there's Widowmaker mm-hmm. on the on the rooftops in London. Uh, that's straight out of that animation, mm-hmm. which came out in like I want to say 2015. Man, it was a long time ago. It was before Metzen left, so it was like somewhere around that. Yeah, it was uh, back when I actually used to play Overwatch. Yeah, Overwatch, man. You know what? Overwatch is is still pretty damn good. It's just. I think we need something new. So two should hurry and get here. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So I, if anyone's looking for a comic book, there's not a whole lot out this week because it is the end of the year. But uh, if someone is into Overwatch and they want, didn't know that there was an Overwatch comic, head to your comic book store if you can, or go get the digital version. Uh, it's from Dark Horse Comics. Uh, they've been doing a lot of the video game comic book tie-in. So if you're into um, the uh, the Valhalla um, Assassin's Creed, they've had a three-part, uh, three-issue miniseries which i think the third issue dropped last week i want to say it's actually fairly solid it takes you all the way up to the opening of the valhalla uh video game Mm -hmm. so if you want a little bit of backstory from there that's that's a series to uh to look at and then if you're into art books and i i think scott aren't you into the art books the video game art books that cover all the behind the scenes and pictures and that kind of stuff love it yeah uh dark horse has also been doing a lot of those with you know you pick the video game company they've been doing it they've been doing stuff with nintendo they've been doing stuff with bioware they've been doing stuff with uh you know blizzard uh so you can go and and check those uh, offerings out from dark horse really annoyed me that blizzard didn't include art books in the last two pre the two most previous expansions of world of warcraft didn't include art books Mm. up till then it was in every thing and now this new expansion does they are back to putting an art book in there mm-hmm. but nice what a bummer because that's some of the best stuff in the freaking world you just it want really that on is. your coffee table yeah. and let people read it yeah and sometimes you're zipping through a an instance or a dungeon or a battle match or whatever and you don't take the time to kind of look around at the stuff the stuff around so those uh, art books give you a chance to yeah plus you really get to see concept art where you're like oh my gosh we fought that guy or you know mm-hmm. whatever right i love that kind right. of stuff uh, well, Stephen, uh, anything going on on the site that we should be aware of uh, this this week of New Year's? Oh, if uh, speaking of video games, you probably are familiar with that Injustice uh, Gods Among Us game. Mm-hmm. Uh, this week's uh, So You Want to Read Comics uh, says, hey, if you like Injustice Gods Among Us, here are a couple of comic books that kind of have that same feeling. One of them might be Injustice Gods Among Us, the comic book uh, that you can check out. That's an article over at Majorspoilers.com. Uh, very nice. It's uh, going to be great to have you for another new year, Stephen. Can't you have wait. A fantastic week. And uh, don't get too much up. What was it, Brian? Don't become a sot this Thursday? Don't you know? become a sot. Yeah, don't Is there, become a sot. What's a good way to not become a sot? Yeah. Uh, uh, just uh, stay hydrated and drink water. Oh, there you go. There stay hydrated. Become no. the designated driver. I didn't even mean to go there. That's <laughs> perfect. All right, Stephen. Oh, I thought that's totally where you were going. No. Had no plan. <laughs> Uh, maybe funny. subconsciously. I don't know how that worked out, but it worked out great. All right. Hey, we got to, we are about done here, except I have the following thing to read. Uh, this is a thing. Hold on. Fan service. A little fan service for a good friend of the show. It says happy holidays to all you happy tadpoolers. After three years in development, two tadpoolers, the son of one of them, uh, have completed work on a new card game. Mike Wiener, all, uh, a.k.a. Mike Crosley, and his son formed Bad Luck Games and joined by fellow tadpooler Sam Wallace. They created Simply City, a deck-building card game. Simplicity. I'm sorry, Simplicity, but City's capitalized, so it threw me. Yeah. Simplicity, not Simple City. Simpil Simp- City. 
Simplicity. But think of it as simple city. Anyway. Simple city. There you go. <laughs> it's a deck building card game. The object of the game is that you, the mayor of your city, invest in businesses, residential buildings, recreational businesses, and more to generate income for your city. It's a race up the ladder of mayoral success to have your city reach the pinnacle of success ahead of your competing mayor. Sounds like a city builder, but in cards. That's awesome. Mm. Game retails for $19.99 plus shipping. And while not yet listed through a publisher on Amazon, is available uh, by writing to Mike at Mike underscore Wiener, R -A W E I N E R E R. You know how to spell Wiener. Wiener at mm -hmm. yahoo.com. So that's the address. I want you guys all to do this. Mike at uh, underscore Wiener at yahoo.com. In honor of Zoe in the tadpole, who you may recall died in October. It's not Zoe brings bacon. She's still with us. Uh, died in October 2019. All proceeds from the Tadpoolers will be donated to Colorectal Cancer Research, uh, one of the most highly rated and most transparent cancer research organizations working on colon cancer, the cancer which took Zoe from us. Uh, while it is uh, late for Christmas and Hanukkah delivery, simply sorry, simplicity would be a great way to enjoy the start of 2021 and to help fellow Tadpoolers and to honor our lost friend Zoe. So go check it out, you guys. It's uh, awesome. All these proceeds go into a really great cause. That's and uh, really cool. I just love that they made this game. Makes me want to yeah. get off. Mike, my Mike is one of those people that uh, made it through the entire one night overnight Las Vegas, the twenty four hour Las Vegas uh, uh, thing I did a few years back. Yep, that proved he, he had the constitution to make a make card a great, game. a great tech deck building game. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because that takes a <laughs> lot of late nights and a lot of testing and stuff. He's got the constitution for it for sure. That's right. For anyway, sure. uh, congratulations on that release, though, and uh, go check it out, everybody. Uh, again, email him, Mike underscore Wiener at Yahoo.com. All uh, right. So, we aka uh, Mary Ailes, actually, is the one who set up Inara's Twitter account, CoverCat. Oh, cat. I didn't know that. Twitter.com CoverCat, which I need to actually put some more photos on because I've got a bunch of great photos of Inara to put on there. And internet and cats go together like uh, cheese and apple pie. There you go. Is that true? Do they go... Do they go well together? Cheese and apple does, pie. Does Kim not like serve apple pie with a slice of uh, melted cheddar on top? Um, I don't think we've ever done that. <laughs> that might be. It feels like a southern thing. I know. I, I feel like that's a southern thing. I, I will ask her because I don't think she's ever done that. But maybe yeah. I'm remembering wrong. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's going to do it for the show today. Big thanks to everybody who supports us on patreoncom TMS. You got a new year coming, a new month coming. Perfect time to sign up even at the lowest level for tons of content and benefits. That's at patreon.com slash TMS. And uh, for all other things that you're trying to look for, you can find them at frogpants.com slash TMS. And a reminder, there's a link there to submit song requests. Um, sometimes they come to me or Brian in ways that we don't see them in time or they just aren't part of the official process. And so it ends up not happening. So make sure you use that link over on the site yes. to get your songs requests uh, in, especially if it's time-based because... We don't always see them. Nope. If you don't send them to, if you don't use the the link at uh, frogpants.com slash TMS, I almost guarantee I won't see it. So yeah, uh, Scott will forward it to me, and then I'll go like, oh, yeah, I need to add that, and then I'll forget to and add it. And then you'll no forget it play. then. Exactly. We all, we, it's, yeah. it's how this goes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's it. That's it for the show. <laughs> Everybody at the Tadpool is like scrambling. What is this cheese on apple pie crap you're talking about? That's what I'm saying. I've never heard of this, but yeah, um, there was somebody I knew uh, uh, who swore by it, and actually, they, she even had a. Um, there was a rhyme. A thank you without the please is like apple pie without the cheese, or something like that. There's like some. So have you done this? Then you've done this. I've never tried it. No. Oh. But, uh, okay. No, she's the one who swore by it. I thought she was from the south. So. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, weird stuff happening in the South. I can confirm that. So I'll find out. <laughs> right. I will find out today. Maybe it was squirrel do. pie. I don't know. Oh, anyway, uh, so there's that. What else? Uh, oh, email us, themorningstream at gmail.com if you have any thoughts, feelings, or whatever. You get a little melancholy about the year ending. I don't know who would, but uh, if you do and you want to tell us about it, that's the place to send it. Let's get out of here. We got to play a song first. Go. Yes. Why, hello, snowman and breeze. It's Stephanie from Madison, a.k.a. Stephanie and Abbott. I've come here to request a song from my best friend and husband, Kyle. His 32nd birthday was on December 27th, said in the past tense, because there was no show that day, and I would like to give him, give him a loving shout-out. 2020 has probably been the crappiest year of my life, and sadly, I'm probably not the only one who also feels this way. Mm -hmm. But, unlike some people, I've been incredibly lucky to have been quarantined these last several months with the love of my life and the bestest friend that I've ever had. 
In fact, there have been many years in our past when we have worked at the same place with the same schedule, so we're used to seeing each other all the time. I couldn't have chosen a better life partner. So, happy birthday to Kyle, who is two years older than me, yet somehow manages to look fresh out of high school. That punk! You guys both look young. You're crazy. I met these two in Chicago and and was amazed that they were old enough to drive to uh, Chicago from Madison. Yes. While Colin and I have always been a fan of Linkin Park, he's really gotten back into them this year, so I leave it in Brian's brilliant hands to choose either a cover of the song My December by Linkin Park, seeing that it is, in fact, December, or a song covered by Linkin Park. And she wraps up by saying, I love you, Kyle. Annoying kissy noises. Mwah, 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 mwah. I, I truly hope Brian read this part. I am really glad you did as well. That's fantastic. <laughs> I'm sure that will never make it into a <laughs> mashup. Uh, yes, let's get to a cover of My December. Um, back in 2012, Scala and Kalakni Brothers, who people know best by the cover of Creep they did for the social network uh, trailer, which is just amazing. They're a, ooh, where are they from? They are um, Scandinavian all-girl choir, uh, mm. all-female choir. Um that uh, is led by the Kalakni brothers. I could get, they, I, I might be getting wrong. Are they see through? Are they kind of transparent? <laughs> I don't know if they're Finnish. Okay, darn it. No way <laughs> I don't know if they're sw- sw- uh, Swedish, Finnish, or uh, uh, Norwegian. They might even, which be is really just name. layer uh, levels of opaqueness that you just described. That's right, exactly. Yeah. It's like it's like the Pantone page <laughs> that gets ripped out. That's partially like different levels of transparency. <laughs> Uh, they do a cover of My December. They include it on their album called December, which features a lot of songs related to the end of the year that aren't necessarily Christmas or holiday songs. So this is a great example of that. Here's My December, originally by Linkin Park, covered here by Scala and Kalakni Brothers. See you guys tomorrow for a big fat Tuesday. We'll see you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. Yeah, the <laughs> <laughs>